The instrument landing system ILS approach is one of the first types of approaches we learn in IFR training. It's a precision approach. We have both lateral guidance in the form of a localizer and vertical guidance from a glide slope. This is the approach plate for the ILS to runway 33 right in Baltimore, this airport's typical general aviation runway. The profile view shows a relatively straightforward layout to this approach. There's an intermediate fix, duds, at 12 DME, a glide slope intercept at 2,000 feet from where the final approach segment begins, and the decision altitude is close to a standard 200 feet above the ground. One thing about this plate, and many others like it, is misleading though right from the start. The diagonal line representing the vertical path seems to suggest that the glide slope passes through duds at 3,000 feet. This isn't really the case. Duds has a minimum crossing altitude at 3,000 feet, but that's actually lower than the altitude you'd be at if you were on the glide slope at Duds, which would be more like 4,000 feet. Let's have a look at flying this approach starting from outside Duds to see how this works. Here, we've just picked up the glide slope represented by the green diamond and we're descending out of 4,500 feet. We're still about a mile and a half outside of Duds. When we pass Duds, we're just barely over 4,000 feet, still on the glide slope, well above that 3,000 foot minimum from the chart. The next fix is Oriole. As we cross that, we're at 2000, the altitude indicated on the chart. This makes sense as the glide slope is specifically depicted here as being at 2000 feet. There was no indicated altitude for the glide slope back at Duds. So we can adjust this chart ourselves to make it a bit more realistic. The 3000 crossing altitude at Duds can be down here, while we can notate 4000 feet where the diagonal line crosses Duds. It's not necessary to do this when flying the approach, but it helps us better visualize the profile. This idea is a little easier to conceptualize looking at the Jeppesen plate for the same approach. Here we see that if we extended out the glide slope line from Oriole, it would cross duds above where it depicts the minimum 3000 foot altitude. So how do we fly this approach given that we're starting it from outside the final approach fix? Here's one way ATC can get us set up for it. Let's say we're arriving from the northwest on a downwind heading of 150 degrees and we're level at 3,000 feet. ATC tells us to expect vectors for the ILS runway 33 right, so we tune the frequency and twist our OBS to set the approach course 335. ATC will keep us on this heading until we're outside of Oriole and then tell us to make a base turn. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, turn left heading 060. So we make this turn and we're now perpendicular to the approach course. Soon ATC will issue our approach clearance. This tends to be a bit of a mouthful so we can organize the elements of the approach clearance using the PTAC acronym. Position, turn, altitude, clearance. Position is three miles from Oriole. Turn will be to 360 so that we're on a heading to intercept the localizer. Altitude will be to maintain 3000 until established and our clearance will be cleared for the ILS 33 right. Putting it together, it sounds like this. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, you're three miles from Oriole. Turn left heading 360, maintain 3000 until intercepting localizer, cleared ILS 33 right approach. On that 360 heading, we'll fly into the localizer feather, and when we do, the localizer needle will come alive and start moving towards center. We'll turn onto our approach course at 335 as the needle gets to center to intercept. Now, if we stay at 3,000 feet, the glide slope needle will come alive and we'll intercept it before reaching Oriole. It's a good idea to configure for our approach just prior to intercepting the glide slope. So when that needle is at the top of the donut, we'll configure for this airplane by reducing power and adding 10 degrees flaps. By the time we establish our descent, we've got the needle centered. Staying on the glide slope will pass Oriole at 2,000, the depicted glide slope intercept. So even though we've chosen to intercept the glide slope early by staying at that higher altitude of 3000, it's worked out for us this time as we've passed Oriole at the 2000 feet depicted. Let's look at another scenario we might get from ATC. Here we're approaching from the southwest, we're direct duds when we receive the approach clearance. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, you're five miles from duds, cross duds at or above 3000, cleared ILS 33 right approach. So instead of getting a vector to intercept between Oriole and Duds, we're going direct to Duds to start the approach. Once again, we'll decide to stay at 3000 after passing Duds. The glide slope will come in. When it's at the top of the donut, we'll configure power and flaps and start down, passing Oriole at 2000 feet again. Let's look just at the approach profile for this. So we start at 3000, pass Duds, 
We could descend below 3,000 after duds, but we'll choose to stay higher. Why would we do this? Again, it allows us to intercept the glide slope earlier than if we were at the published glide slope intercept altitude of 2,000 feet. Instrument approaches are all about stability. The sooner you can get established on the localizer and glide slope, the sooner you're stabilized, allowing for a smoother approach. So then why is there only one glide slope intercept altitude, and what are the downsides in ignoring it to intercept earlier? Here's what the AIM says in 5-4-5. First of all, we're told to follow published altitudes on the approach because they're used for vertical separation with other aircraft. So far, that hasn't been a problem because as we saw, even starting the glide slope further out, we were able to stick to all the altitude restrictions at each fix. Then in note 2, it says that the glide slope is intended to be intercepted at the published altitude. In this case, that was 2,000 feet. No matter how far out we pick up the glide slope, we're not on the final approach segment until we reach that 2,000 feet. This is important for commercial operators under 121 or 135 since they'd need to break off an approach if the weather got below minimums before they were on that final approach segment. So knowing exactly where this is matters. Finally, we're told that intercepting the glide slope prior to that point doesn't guarantee we meet altitude restrictions. So we're not forbidden from intercepting early, but we have to realize that following the glide slope won't necessarily keep us above altitude minimums on the approach. How could this be? How could following the glide slope get us into trouble? Let's look at our situation again at 3,000 feet on the glide slope prior to Oriel. If standard temperatures exist, the field will be reporting 15 degrees Celsius. But if the temps are 10 degrees above standard and Baltimore is reporting 25 degrees, the altimeter will actually be indicating more than 100 feet lower. There's no real danger to this. Our true altitude is still 3,000 feet. The glide slope doesn't change because the temperature changes, but our indicated altitude will read lower. The problem comes from the fact that indicated altitudes are used for traffic separation. Let's say the field is at 35 degrees, and our true altitude still at 3,000 indicates as less than 2,800 feet. This error will carry through to when we pass Oriole, so that even though we're on the glide slope, we've actually busted the minimum altitude. Many pilots and companies will have a policy of descending to the glide slope intercept of 2,000 feet after duds, but this doesn't fix the problem either. Intercepting at 2,000 feet with these high temp altimeter errors means we still pick up the glide slope before Oriole and pass that fix below 2,000. It's not a problem here because either way we've adhered to all our requirements. It's more of an academic matter on this approach, but consider the profile view for the ILS into 24 right at Los Angeles. Look at all those step-down fixes prior to the final approach fix at Kobe. Each one of those fixes has to be crossed at or above the minimum altitude. On a hot day, picking up the glide slope from, say, 7,000 feet won't allow for that. We'll miss each one of our crossing restrictions all the way down, so we'll need to descend to each in sequence before intercepting the glide slope at 2,200. Sophisticated autopilots, like the ones on board the aircraft more likely to be flying this approach into LAX, will allow for vertical navigation to fly a stabilized approach this far out. But just doing so off the glide slope won't allow for that. So however it's done, choosing to stabilize your approach further out than glide slope intercept still requires you to make sure you're meeting all those minimum altitude restrictions, just as the AIM tells us to.